Could the lizard serum actually work? Or is that biting off more than we can chew? The lizard's a guy you definitely don't want to run into in a dark alley. Or anywhere else, for that matter. He may be one big bulk of scaly and scary, but he actually had some pretty good intentions, at least at first. Kurt Connors, a scientist specializing in cross-species genetics, wanted to make a serum that would regenerate human limbs and heal human wounds. However, his use of lizard DNA in the serum caused him to transform into a reptilian monster. But would his serum actually work in real life? Well, first off, we have to take a look at what the serum actually was. Unfortunately, we can't exactly do that. The only details we're really given is that the serum is built off of lizard DNA. But why would that be, anyway? Well, you see, a lot of reptiles are actually able to regenerate lost limbs, and more commonly, their tails. Examples include oxalotls, newts, and tritons. So, it's likely that the serum did contain genes from a semi-aquatic or fully aquatic reptile. We can't really narrow that down, however, because we don't really have any way of knowing. There's been so many different versions of the lizard that it'd be impossible to say which reptile the serum came from. However, we can pinpoint exactly which parts of the reptile were used in the serum. Let's try and narrow it down. We know lizard DNA was used in the serum, but it should be more specific than just that. If that's all it was, nothing would happen. So the answer to our miracle serum must lie deeper, possibly in our chain of evolution. While evolution is technically still just a theory, there's so much evidence to support it that most consider it fact. So if we're to believe the theory of evolution, all forms of life on Earth came from one species, one common species called a common ancestor. What this animal was is both unknown and in this case irrelevant. All we need to know is that the species of primates and the species of reptiles are distantly related if evolution is real. So, what does that mean for our serum? Well, it doesn't mean much, at least not definitely. It does suggest a few things, though. It suggests that there are similarities in our genes and the genes of reptiles. In fact, it's possible that we share genes. And what does that mean? It means that we may have suppressed unused genes that relate to reptiles. Now. That may sound crazy, but there is some evidence to support it. Believe it or not, our livers can practically fully regenerate, and for the first 12 years of our lives, so can the tips of our fingers. Is it possible these actions are leftover genes from our reptile days? It might be that, but it's likely not what makes the serum work. The injection of lizard DNA wouldn't just awaken properties we have suppressed. Heck, we're not even sure if such properties exist in the human body. And even if we do, lizard DNA isn't magic. Again, DNA alone isn't what we're looking for, even if we do have similar genes to reptiles. So, what else in a reptilian body could regenerate body parts? Well, the answer may surprise you. Listen to this. In 2005, a man lost the tip of his finger in an accident with a machine he was working with. When he went to the hospital, he got himself bandaged up. The medical professional there recommended cosmetic surgery when they couldn't reattach the fingertip. Instead, the man took some advice from a relative, who happened to be a biologist of sorts. He recommended that the man take a substance called extracellular matrix. The man had the substance injected into him, and soon enough, his fingertip grew back, nail, bone, skin and all. Wait, extra... curricular... what? Extracellular matrix. What even is that? Well, it's a substance found in all animals, although from what I found, it's not always used by the animal's body, at least not primarily. It's a substance that acts like a cellular scaffolding, directing the animal cells to build, differentiate, and separate. Basically, it tells the cells to make or not make certain parts of the body. When Frodo Baggins here was injected with it, it told his cells to regenerate his finger. And as a pretty good bonus, there are no cells native to the animal found in the extracellular matrix, since all animals have it. And, in this case, the extracellular matrix actually came from the bladder of a pig. And since all animals have it, reptiles certainly have it. So, if reptiles have it, 
Is that what's in our serum? The answer is... mostly? See, it probably does have a few more components in it that make it regrow entire limbs. But not only is it the key to the serum theoretically, it is in all likeliness as well. So wait, then why did Kurt become the lizard? Shouldn't the serum have worked for him if it all it took was an extracellular matrix? Let's see if we can save that for another video. I've done the research, but for now, we've got the answer to our question. Is it possible to regenerate limbs using a lizard DNA serum? Eh, kind of. It's not straight up DNA from the lizard, but the answer is so close to yes that it holds a lot of promise. That kind of serum was a curse for Kurt Connors. But in real life, it could be a miracle. And it wouldn't even cost us an arm or a leg. Hey guys, hope you all enjoyed the episode of Science Behind Superheroes. If you guys did, make sure to leave a like and make sure to leave a comment as to what superhero or supervillain you guys want to see me do in the future. This episode was suggested by Green Jiggles. Go check him out, go subscribe and give him some support. It was a very good suggestion. Now, as you guys can see in the little announcement down there, next episode is going to be a special. I'm not going to give anything away for it, but it is going to be our first special on this. And I do intend to do specials every now and then. So yeah, guys, make sure to stay tuned in for that. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.